All right, well, I'm gonna get started, I think. Should be five o'clock now. My time, anyway. Uh, so welcome. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for tuning in. And if you're watching this later as a YouTube archive, then thank you for watching on YouTube. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is... With German pronunciation. is okay, however you say it. <laughs> well, I would like to know how you pronounce it so that I, I get it. I get it right. Uh, your, your name should sound the way you want it to be. So, in any case, um, yeah, this is a Nero, I think it's the way it's pronounced. It is a, uh, it's got a lot of good reviews. I bought it at the Steam Summer Sale. Jar is the mystery review. Oh, hi, Jar. How you doing? Hi, Jar of Jam. Jar, Jam. We call you both, don't we? Um, so I got this on the Steam Summer Sale. It was quite cheap. I had my eye on it for a while. It looks really good. It looks really interesting. And I'm ready to get started. I don't know why it says continue here, because I have never played this before. I've just booted it up for the first time. Uh, people who are watching, please give me any and all feedback. If the sound levels are bad, or if you can't hear me, or if there's any kind of issue, just let me know in the chat. I can see your chat. And I'm going to go ahead and start. Do you want to start a new game? I do. This so will erase your current game progression. Again, I have never played this before, so... Oh, you logged in. Hello, Jar of Jam. Before you is a gateway between worlds known simply as the Artifact. It grants access to dreams and the waking realm. With its power, you can observe both sides of a dreamer, their conscious and unconscious selves. Understanding the hidden symbolism of each world will provide valuable insight into their lives. Very interesting. So we'll be looking inside people's heads. Alright. A game being played still says Day of the Tentacle. Oh, thank you. That is a good point. I forgot to change that. So, hold on. Let me test my fancy AFK screen. How's that look? And let me fix that. I knew I would forget something. It's, uh... Once I start doing this every week like this, it's gonna be... A little bit better. Yeah, it does still say Day of the Tentacle. Goodness me. Well, a Nero is not on their list, of course. Can I just put other game? Other. Um, I'm leaving it as family friendly for now. I hope there are no family unfriendly things here. I'll just put the game title in. Stream title. Save. All right. Hopefully that'll fix it up. Thank you for the heads up on that. All right, I see an exclamation point. I'm gonna get into this. Switch back to the game. Gotta remember to do that. Okay. Good evening. A challenge awaits you. It will unlock the gates to this world. The object before you is a token from me to you. Here on this table, it holds a precious memory. Okay. Piece together the meaning Within of the object, object from the associated the dream pieces fragment. of a whole. When you find the symbolism within each fragment, you will unlock the object's meaning. These fragments can be explored in any order. Hmm. This all feels very abstract. I'm sure we'll see. Oh, we've got each stuff. Each fragment is a glimpse at something larger. A puzzle that must be understood and solved. Yes. Very you serious must find voice, knowledge isn't it? Beyond merely yourself. Research in the waking world will open doors in this reality. Descend further to validate your research. Alright, now I think what this is referencing is that you need real world knowledge in order to solve the puzzles in this. Like the narrator's in a play. Yeah. Well, kind of is. He's acting, you know. Um, okay, so I can't do anything with this stuff. I can just look at it. We've got this London Street, Great Nut Little, was host to the first children's hospital. Game seems a bit quiet. Oh, okay. We had one person saying that it sounded a little bit loud. Maybe I can find a balance between the two. How about there? Is that a little bit better? You hear it all right? We'll find that sweet spot. Let me know how that sounds. I've just adjusted it a little bit. Um, so London Street, Great Nut Little was host to the first children's hospital. So I think this is a game it would be better if I had two monitors or something so I could do some research. I might have to ask you guys for some help. So 
Does somebody want to do a Google search? This seems like a pretty easy one. Uh, where was the first children's hospital in London? I definitely don't know. We've got some people here. Bent over a child. We've got this building, which is presumably the hospital, and this symbol. Which resembles the medical thing, but looks a bit like a harsher version. I don't know. Just a sword. There's some... something dripping off of here. Some blood, maybe, or some venom or something from the snakes. I don't know. Okay. Uh... What am I supposed to do? Discover the meaning. Hence... Sigil? You must, must literally treat. draw a conclusion. This divine geometry, a sigil in essence, will bring you closer to finding me. You. So this is not just a narrator I'm voice. I'm in a small house in the woods, surrounded by a myriad of animals of every kind. A nest, lying in the center, held a little girl. Myself. Pale and asleep, the animals cried as I stood over her, and a little white bird flew through the window. It said, you must clap, you must believe or she will die. I tried to clap, and I did, but the animals could not. I saw she was doomed, and I clapped along as she died. No one could help her. I don't know if you guys got any of that. Um, I really need subtitles, and this does not appear to have them. So that is going to be an issue. Okay, I will need you guys' help, so... There was something about uh, someone being sick, and a bird, and clapping, and animals weren't able to clap? I was standing in a small house oh. in the woods, oh, surrounded to turn by my volume, myriad of animals of every kind. A nest, lying in the center, held a little girl. Myself. Pale and asleep. The animals cried as I stood over her, and a little white bird flew through the window. It said, you must clap, you must believe, or she will die. I tried to clap, and I did, but the animals could not. I saw she was doomed, and I clapped along as she died. No one could help her. Hmm. The narration is quiet, yeah. Alright, let me... Uh... Turn the music down, and then it can turn the overall audio up. Maybe the game effects down a bit as well. And then we can turn this up a bit, and we'll see if it's any better. Alright, well, we'll see. We'll see if this has any better. Great Ormond. Great Ormond. Well, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to- what I'm supposed to write this. Um, are the letters for Ormond in here? Okay, are the letters for great in here? Let's see, or mon need an N D Ormond. Hey, hey! Great Ormond Street Hospital. Thank you very much, Jar of Jam, for the help on the research. Let's try the this moon, one. Like a massive pearl illuminated the scene. A twisted emerald lake crowded with tiny ships. In a bird's nest boat, I was a little girl with a broomstick mast and bedsheet sail. A cloud moved across the moon, and it was a flock of little white birds. They broke across the fleet of ships, and we rose from the water to fly over London's roofs. The breeze is beautiful as I went up to a starless night. Yes, your Google Foo is very much appreciated. Um... Okay. Connection you must make between London, London, a lake, and a snake. I feel like it would help this if I were from London. Serpentine River? Serpentine... Let's see if we can spell that. R-P... Oh, maybe. I'm glad somebody knows these things. It is a lake. Well, we can still try it. The letters do appear to be here. Oh, but there's no... Nope. Okay, that's not it. It is a lake in London. Well, it wouldn't let me spell serpent, serpentine, serpentine. Um, oh, close the sigil. A lake and a snake. It does seem like it should be, doesn't it? Was I just too slow? Oh, no, there's but there's uh, an odd number of letters in serpentine. 
I misspelled it? Oh, okay, hold on. S E R P I used N E. Serp You mean E N? Serp N T I N E. Oh, I I did misspell it. What did I do before? A thread so binds around. each fragment together. An attribute awesome. of each Teamwork, points you guys. in the direction of their similar virtues. Once you have found the hidden connection, the object's meaning will become clear. Hmm. So I need to make a connection between this hospital. I'm a very silly goose. Very, very silly. And the serpentine. Serpentine? Is it serpentine or serpentine? I don't know. Hmm. Whoops. That was a misclick. There we go. Hmm. How can we make a connection between these? Are they located near each other? Or are we supposed to follow the lines? Oh goodness, you're using the phonetic alphabet. And even though I'm an English teacher, I actually don't know it very well. <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's the long eye or the short eye. Oh, you've done so much work too to give me that. Um, I'm going to write that down and I'm going to look at it again later and, and find the correct pronunciations that I do it correctly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for correcting me in any way because I know I was pronouncing it wrong. Anyone got any ideas on, on what we should do here? No, I'm tempted to just like, can I look at these again? No, I can't. So we're supposed to have enough information already. Piece together the meaning of the object from the associated dream fragment. Hmm. If we... I'm not sure if I can do it precisely if I try to... Like, just follow where... No, it's nothing to that. Huh. All right, Google Foo Masters. Is there a connection between these two places in London? Great Ormond Street Hospital and the Serpentine or Serpentine, depending on which is correct. Just to gather the meaning of the object. Pen. I'm still looking at these shapes from before and seeing if I can... I don't see any way to do that. Hints? Using hints will help you in your research. Carefully, you have a maximum of five hints to consume every night. So I guess it would be five hints per... per real life day? Or is it five hints per... Uh, part of the game? They really don't hold your hand here, do they, guys? I don't know, what do you think? Let's let's take a little vote. Should I consume a hint, or does anyone have another idea of something that I can try out here? Because I'm really pretty... unsure. I feel like that one is here. But again, I, I really don't know if that's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. I need a hint. Not finding anything on Google. Well, let's, let's use one hint. Might as well use one hint. Christmas morning on the Serpentine. Alright, so this is some kind of... connection between the places. Not connection, necessarily. Hospital and snake are related by that medical symbol. That is true. Christmas morning. Yeah, this is definitely a research thing, isn't it? Oh, it's such a shame that I don't have a second monitor. I am considering getting a second monitor, guys. Mm, I could I could technically afford it if I get just a cheap one. And I think it would help a lot for stuff like this, because I could do research on the side. Or I can just send you guys... Caduceus. Wow. Uh, I don't see any CA. You are correct. It's not on there. However, we just learned a new word, everyone. So, thank you, Jan, for that. 
Someone want to just Google Christmas on the Serpentine and see uh, if that gives us anything? I'm trying to trying to see if there's like any words that I notice that I can make from these, but hmm. I'm not finding anything. Minions? Oh yes, you are my minions. Mwahaha. <laughs> my loyal minions, loyal faithful minions. How far will it let you go before it tells you you're wrong? Three, okay. So you can do two without knowing that you're wrong. A snake on a rod is a reference to the rod of Asclepius. Let's see if we've got those letters. I uh, don't think so. I don't see any AS. It's a good guess. It doesn't seem to be it. See, let's let's do one more hint. Let's see what they've got. The hospital's intellectual property. Intellectual property of a hospital? What do hospitals on Christmas they swim in the lake? This is tough. But it has something to do with the children's hospital. An intellectual property. What is the intellectual property of a hospital, guys? Goodness, I didn't realize I was going to need to use my brain quite so much for this. Here I was thinking, oh, we'll, we'll save Vengers for next week when I'm a little bit more rested and not so jet-lagged. Oh my goodness, that would have been way easier. Learning a new nonsense language. It says copyright next to the hospital link. <laughs> oh, you're right, it does say copyright. It won't let me go back in there, though. So I can't look at that stuff anymore. So presumably they think that these things right here are enough information. Copyright. What is the copyright of Great Ormond Street Hospital? Hmm. And has something to do with Christmas and this lake. Goodness, I don't know. You know what? I might have to use... Hospital holds the rights to Peter Pan. Oh, you know what? They were they were uh, playing some audio before that that was clearly related to Peter Pan. It wasn't exactly the play, but it was. They've got Pan right here. Peter Pan. Ah, <gasps> yes. Now that you have Jam comes all through the again and understood the well meaning done. of all objects. You will connect with the presence behind these memories. Once this seance has occurred, new paths will open for you in the artifact. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure we'll find out. Okay, Peter Pan. Oh, that's it. Okay, I guess we're supposed to click here. All right. Awesome. So this one's finished, I guess. Now we need to do this one. Why does it still have an exclamation point next to it? Okay. You have uncovered something of interest in the waking world. You may leave the dream and view it online. Oh. Oh, well, this is opening my browser now, guys. Um, let me see. I can... Just give me one moment here, and I will uh, change... Uh, OBS to show you my screen. We'll just do that. Um, yeah. So, I think it already has switched actually, hasn't it? Can you guys see the browser window now? This Kino Fata Dream Journal Sick Children thing? I'll start reading it. This is a great game for streaming, yeah. I, I, I don't know that I could do this without you guys. <laughs> So, uh, now that I know this, I will make sure in the future to have this ready to switch over without having to quickly close all of my embarrassing personal things. That's alright. I think you guys are probably okay. Alright, anyway. 
Jocelyn's dream journal, my nightly visions aided by the technique recorded for further analysis. I just want to rest. Past post clinic, not my medication, overwhelm, not sleeping. Yet it is in our idleness, in our dreams, that the submerged truth sometimes comes to the top. So it looks like this is a fictional uh, blog created for the game. So it's got a very much of an ARG kind of feel to it. Uh, the, the creators of this game, by the way, did make a very famous ARG, and I can't remember the name of it now. The Watchmen, I think? Something like that. So it's their, their forte. All right, I guess I'm going to have to read this to you. I'm sure you can see it, but I'll read it anyway. Sick children, I can't even remember the last time I felt this tired. It's a deep exhaustion that feels like it's settled into my very bones. I walk sometimes to try and exercise my muscles. Not far, there aren't many places that I can explore on my own, and even still, with supervision, there isn't much to see. But each movement feels languid, like a broken old windmill that still haphazardly turns in the wind. I think of the sick children in a hospital like in old Victorian no novels. How weary they must have been from long days in bed, needing to play outside, to feel the wind on their pale and clammy skin, needing to smell the leaves, the breeze from the serpentine. I think of how sad they must have been, and how wrong I am to feel my own sadness. Will I ever get better? Can I even become healthy again? I fear the answer, and I'm afraid I don't have the hope or the strength to fight against it right now. Something changed last night, but I'm not quite sure I can tell what just yet. I had another one of my dreams last night. The dream, it, it felt almost tangible, like I could reach out and touch it. It was so different than before. I felt like a fairy, flying from a beautiful, faraway garden to this great industrial city. Then I was there, in a great old hospital. As an aside, for some reason the name Great Ormond Street Hospital was with me. After waking, I researched it online, and it didn't take me long to see the stu sturdy architecture, the cylindrical towers, and the many windows I knew so well from my dream. Inside, there was a sad little kid. Her eyes stared out the window beside her bed, and I knew she wanted to be outside. But I recognized the deep tiredness in her eyes. It's a tired I've recently come to know. I watched her take a deep breath and close her eyes, and that was it. I've often wondered, more so lately, if there is any peace in that final breath. How restful it must be knowing your tired and weary bones won't ache any more. I was sad, but there was a presence with me. A new presence I had never felt before. It was reassuring, like I knew with it around I would be safe. The child did not seem sad when she died, but the presence helped me. It calmed me, and helped me move away from the child and my own sadness. I felt it reach out somehow, felt it touch me. I felt like that breath of fresh air I imagined the child was desperate for. I have to stop here. The nurse just t told me my time is up. The nurse just old me. Now in a game like this, I cannot help but wonder if that's intentional typo. Hmm. Somehow I feel less fearful for tonight. Okay. So we've also got four pass posts, and I can't help but feel like we should probably check them out. Oh good, they're nice and short, at least this one is. Clinic. Tomorrow will be my first day at the clinic. I can't lie to myself any longer. I am not getting any better. I'm worried. Something is wrong. I haven't felt this terrible since before starting my medication. And that was the most distressing time of my life. Feeling so ill, so out of control, so afraid of myself and what my body was doing. I don't want to be in that position again. I pray this clinic can help me. The doctor seems nice, confident. She smiles, and I want to believe in her smile. I've been sick before and I beat it, she likes to remind me, to encourage me. I have to be honest, I'm sick. My body is so weak I can't eat and I have a hard time concentrating on anything. I can barely even type this, I'm so tired all the time. They want me to stay here overnight so they can monitor me. I am scared. What is happening to me? Hmm. Not my medication. Okay, so I definitely don't think it's my medication. I've been on these for well over two years now and I haven't had any of these problems. I ordered in my favorite food from my favorite Indian restaurant, I'm still so tired there was no hope of me going to get groceries, and after taking one bite of my curry I threw everything up. After that I've had a hard time even looking at food. And I've had another dream. It was weird. The dark shadow seemed bigger somehow. Maybe it was just farther away in my last dream. Is it getting closer to me? What will happen if it reaches me? I'll have to ask Jonathan about this, he'll know. The whole not sleeping much anymore thing is wearing me down, and then when I do sleep I get these dreams. My physical tiredness is getting worse too. I don't have an appetite at all anymore. Am I getting more sick than I want to admit? My family is insistent I go to the clinic. They're worried about me. I have to say there can't be any harm in going to see a doctor, just to make sure. <clears throat> oh, just a moment, need a drink. Unexpected long reading? Okay. Overwhelmed. I've been feeling really overwhelmed, tired, and sick. I might be getting a cold. It wouldn't surprise me, not after all the stress I've been putting myself under and my newfound inability to sleep. But when I do finally sleep, my dreams just keep becoming more bizarre. 
that shadow was there again. Sometimes it feels like a fog, like if I try to concentrate on it in my dream, my head gets fuzzy and I wake up feeling dizzy. Maybe it's my medication. I need water and then I'm just watching old movies in bed for the rest of the day. Some rest and no work will do me good. Luckily, I live close to a clinic, one that specializes in mental health. Perhaps I'll go if I can't shake this on my own. My family and Jonathan all think it's good that I'm considering getting help. Again. We'll see. There's another typo here as a comma instead of a period. I do also appear to be reading these in reverse order, but there are no dates on them. But I suppose that would make sense, that there would be no dates on them, because who knows how long this website will be around for the game. So this will be the earliest one, yeah. Not sleeping. I couldn't sleep last night. I used to try to read to pass the time, but now I often find myself distracted on the internet. That's how I came across this forum about lucid dreaming. I've always been interested in lucid dreaming. Tennyson wrote, Dreams are true while they last, and do we not live in dreams? I wonder. Do we live in our dreams? I've met a new friend in one of my lucid dreaming forums. His name's Jonathan. He's nice, funny. Likes the same bad poetry that I do. He's teaching me some tricks he knows about how to control his- knows about how to control his own dreams. There we go. I've tried, but so far I've had no luck. And besides, there's always this dark shadow in mine. I'm a bit afraid of it, honestly. I don't think it means me any harm, but it's also just lurking there. Like it's waiting. Waiting for what? Maybe if I learn to control my dreams, I can talk to this shadow. Alright, so let's go back to the game. Now that I have... worn out my voice thoroughly. Get back in here. So we've learned something. Presumably this is the person whose dreams we're interacting with here. And whose history we're interacting with. So let's check out the next one. I just want respite. To fall into the blissful void. To wake up rested, my mind restored. I can't spend another night in there. This vision that plagues me, this illness that invades me each night. I can't keep going like this. The exercise the doctor gave me, the glasswick technique, it's supposed to put me back in control. I've tried everything else. This has to work. There's no use fighting it anymore. I can already feel myself drifting off. All I can hope for is that tonight will be different. It's time to go to sleep. At least it's I had the to text go to sleep. written out for this one. Okay. Alright, so more of the same now. This story is a little close to home, I gotta say. As somebody who's struggled with chronic sleep issues my entire life. Um... Nothing here? How about here? As I struggled in the crowd, I watched my shadow race out from under my feet, after the green light. A prim and mustached man spoke up beside me. Lost your shadow, I see. Fear not. I shall find it. He cocked a brow and set off in the same direction. I pushed through the throngs of people, doing my best to keep up. Alright, well this one I know. The narrator of the first collection of twelve is in fact not the sleuth himself. Not Sherlock Holmes, come on now. The narrator. Oh, maybe they do want me to say Sherlock. Oh, hold on. Is there a T? Okay, here we go. O-N? Where's my O-N? There we go. Come on, not Holmes. Watson. Watson is the narrator. There's one that I know something about, and not only because of the BBC series, I do I actually like the I was lost in a crowd. Thousands of people were aflutter around me. Many had congregated on a dock, looking off at something in the distance, speaking in languages I could not understand. As I joined them, I saw a huge bronze woman holding a torch. Suddenly, a green speck flashed across my vision. I had never seen anything like it. This one is clearly Ellis Island. Now we're into stuff that I know something about. Um, e L L I S Ellis. Okay. I know it's a little unfair to you guys if I get it right away because of the lag. I think you're probably about 30 seconds latency, so you're a little behind me. The but I'm excited when I know one. Sleeping against a tree, the green light, which I could now see to be a fairy, was buzzing about a book clutched in the sleeping man's hands. My shadow stood watching, dazzled by the spectacle. The sleuth revealed his logic. 
the man's rainbowed collection of stories tended to attract many an irksome creature. Startled by his voice, the fairy abandoned the book, and we watched it flutter back towards the docks. I turned to face the sleeper, only to see my shadow boarding a train car behind him. I leapt onto the train as the doors closed behind me. Hmm. This one doesn't have any text clue. Bronze something, 12 something. So we're looking for the missing one. Here's the fairy. Looks Could be Tinkerbell. They've been going with a Peter Pan motif. We've got a rainbow. Hmm. All right, I'm not so sure about this one now. I don't recognize any of these images. I do think this is Tinkerbell. But I don't know about the others. Can we close... How do you, um... Like that? There we go. Can I go back and look at these? No, I can't. I don't like that, that they don't let us go back and look. Even just for interest's sake. I would love to be able to look back in there. The sleuth led me to a man sleeping against a tree. The green light, which I could now see to be a fairy, was buzzing about a book clutched in the sleeping man's hands. My shadow stood watching, dazzled by the spectacle. The sleuth revealed his logic. The man's rainbowed collection of stories tended to attract many an irksome creature. Startled by his voice, the fairy abandoned the book, and we watched it flutter back towards the docks. I turned to face the sleeper, only to see my shadow boarding a train car behind him. I leapt onto the train as the doors closed behind me. Alright, she's talking about the shadow and a book. Conan Doyle believed in fairies. Okay. Well, there's certainly some kind of link there. Um, I've never actually seen or read the original Peter Pan play. I think it did start as a play, right? It didn't start as a, as a book, did it? Is there a book that features heavily in there at all? Is this bronze 12 something? Because we're looking for this. There's a collection of three. Like, oh, I was assuming they were books, but actually, because the voice was talking about books, but actually maybe these are just pictures. We might need some Google Foo on this one, guys. Is there a book that features in the play Peter Pan? Or did Arthur Conan Doyle have any connection to it? I guess this is not necessarily connected to Sherlock Holmes or Ellis Island, right? This is its own the thing, and then we'll find the connection a between them after. Against a tree. The green light, which I could now see to be a huh. fairy, was buzzing about a book clutched in the sleeping man's hands. My shadow stood watching. Dazzled by the spectacle, the sleuth revealed his logic. The man's rainbowed collection of stories tended to attract many an irksome creature. Startled by his stories voice, the fairy abandoned the book, creatures. and we watched it flutter back towards the docks. I turned to face the sleeper, only to see my shadow boarding a train car behind him. I leapt onto the train as the doors closed behind me. Not very helpful. Bronze rings? Twelve ladies dressed in a fancy old clothes. <laughs> this is the only one that I feel like I have an idea what it's supposed to be. And we've got this picture of... It's very difficult to see, actually, but it's some kind of farm or village with a rainbow in the background. Bronze Twelve. Andrew Lang? Andrew Lang. Who is Andrew Lang? Well, let's see if we've got those letters. That well, doesn't look like we do anyway. Dang. Well, I don't see any LA combinations. I suppose I could be using my tablet here, couldn't I? Don't have a second monitor, but I can I can help a little bit with this research. Let's see what we can get here. I do love my tablet. 
Everyone, ready, set, research. What is the connection? An author written several books, including The Blue Fairy and The Bronze Ring. Okay, so we've got Bronze Ring. Uh, is there a book with the word 12 in it? I'm looking on my tablet now as well. Andrew Lang. Got the red fairy book, the yellow fairy book, the green fairy book, the violet fairy book. Goodness gracious. The pink fairy book. There's a whole bunch of different fairy books. Okay. Andrew Lang's fairy books. There are 12 fairy books. Okay. We've got... Blue, red, green. These these three color triangles must have something to do with something. Let's see if we can look into the green fairy book and see if we can find anything about that. Green fairy book. And what about... Oh, the bronze ring is a book. So we've got the bronze ring, 12 fairy books. Okay, hold on. So this is 12 fairy books, and what is missing from here? First paragraph. Oof, the problem with doing research on my tablet is that the browser always runs really slowly for some reason. Maybe the Wi-Fi needs to be rebooted. The red one is the Twelve Dancing Princesses. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, no, there, there's not the letters to make Lang. We tried that already. I think we're looking for the names. Uh, the name of one of his books. Is my guess. So we've got a monk of Fife, Adventures Among Books, Angling Sketches, Arabian Arabian Nights. This rainbow one here, crimson. Bronze. I actually don't see a bronze ring on the list here. Or is it nonfiction? No. Hmm. He wrote fairy tales, numerous historical texts, collected essays on religion, myths, the noble savage, and magic. Rainbow, rainbow fairy books. I was wondering if maybe this was something to do with, uh, or maybe this one was supposed to give the name of another. Yeah, because this is a fairy. We've got the rainbow. Blue, red, green. All right, so let me see if I can find out something about the green fairy book. Come on, come on. I need faster internet. I wish there were faster internet available in my area, but there is not. The green fairy book. There is no information here. Okay. Try Andrew Lang Green Fairy Book. Can you show the sigil? Yeah, of course. Now to find the connection between Conan Doyle, Ellis Island, and Andrew Lang are fairies. Well, first we have to do this one. But yes, that is definitely the next step. The Green Fairy Book. Okay. Grandma's Treasures, the Green Fairy Book. Grandma's treasures. Hmm. Don't think so. I don't know. Are we are we on the wrong track somehow? It's gotta have something to do with green. 
But why is blue? Why is bronze ring, bronze ring blue? Is that the name of the blue? Hello, Mephensteris. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either. I never know how to pronounce people's names. Welcome. Do you have any idea what to do here? Try blue? I think it's probably going to be more than two. I think we have to have at least three. So no, not, not just blue. Do we, oh, oh, do we need five parts or is that just the maximum? Hmm. The Blue Fairy Book first story is the Bronze Ring. Aha! Mephansterus? Mephansterus? Which one? I'm learning how to pronounce people's names at long, la at long last. Okay, so the first in the Blue Fairy is the Bronze Ring. First in the Red Fairy is the Twelve Dancing Princesses. So what's the first in the Green Book? Now we're getting it. The blue bird. Aha! So maybe I need to type not just blue, but blue bird. Oh, oh. Yes! Woo! Can also just call you Meph. Yeah, I probably will do that. I think I usually do just call you Meph. <laughs> it's easier. Awesome! So we've got the three. Now we need to find a connection between Sherlock Holmes, Ellis Island, and the Green Fairy Book. And I know nothing about this. I know some things about this and this, but not about this. Alright, what have we got? We've got numbers. <gasps> I bet you they all have a date in common, you guys. You do not know this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying this game out for the first time. It is definitely very puzzling, and it's a puzzle game that requires us to uh, do real-life research. So I've got my tablet out, and everyone is helping with their Google Foo. So, alright, what year was the Green Fairy book? Published. If I try to get this on my tablet, it's going to take forever. Blue fairy book. Red fairy book. Blue poetry book. 1891. No, that's not it. God, what am I looking at? Green fairy book, first edition, 1982. 1892 or 1982? <laughs> it's got to be 1892, right? Surely. Green Fairy Book, 1892. Okay. Let's see if that's it. 18... 92? Yes! And Ellis opened the same time. Yep. We get it. We got it. We got the first one. This is just the first one? Oh my gosh. Oh no, wait. Yeah, that was just the first one. Oh my gosh. Whew. Spectacular. Okay. We're doing really well, guys. We've got about 18 minutes left. Let's see if we can do one more I at least. I back by the edge of the pool to catch my breath as water dripped off of me onto the tiles. I was no longer hysterical, but troubled by how close I had come to the unfathomable darkness. I blinked, and a deathly pale female face broke the surface of the water. The drowned woman spoke. I don't think two people could have been happier till this terrible disease came. I can't fight any longer. Her face dipped back below the surface and passed into the dark, but was quickly replaced by another figure. My shadow emerged from the depths. In the blue light of the moon, it seemed taller and menacing. I fled. Okay, interesting audio. I'm gonna let others foo for a bit. You're gonna take a break? That's fair. Uh, so I've already googled Bloomsbury Group in my tablet. Uh, it was an influential group of associated English writers, intellectuals, philosophers, and artists, best known members of which included Virginia Woolf, John Maynard Keynes, E.M. Forster, and Lytton Strachey. Well, not that well known because I don't even know how to pronounce their name. Okay. So, although its members denied being a group in any formal sense, they were united by an abiding belief in the importance of the arts. And we've got this quote here, with everything gone, only this certainty remained. And this is, oh crap, I'm, I have the worst memory for names, even though I recognize the face. Uh, is it Virginia Woolf? I think it's Virginia Woolf. 
Yeah, that's definitely Virginia Woolf. So Virginia Woolf. And maybe this is a quote from something. Let's see if we type in uh, with everything gone. You guys can probably do this faster than me. I'm just going to type in with everything gone and see if what comes up. <laughs> Bloomsbury Group need help. Spoiler. <laughs> so the first thing that comes up is somebody looking for help on this puzzle in this game. Spectacular. Um, not finding any quote. And I'm not going to look at spoilers just for this game because we don't want to do that. It's Virginia Woolf. She was in this group. I don't know what this is. 328. This is... Virginia Woolf was American, right? So it would be March 28. Well, obviously 28 wouldn't be a month anyway. With everything gone, only the certainty remained. Hmm. I need some Google ninjas. Oh, this is from her suicide letter. Oh, geez, that's what we're looking at here. This is part of her suicide letter. Well, that's horrible. Can't read. So I'm reading. I'm reading Virginia Woolf's suicide letter now. This is not something that I expected I would be doing, and I should probably change. Uh, oh, we're on the same page here, aren't we? I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, the stream from family-friendly to teen. Because <laughs> this is probably not a family-friendly topic that we've hit now. I don't know, is it just suicide? Am I just supposed to type out suicide? Or maybe not. Um, let's see. I'm now reading the letter. Shan't recover this time. Best thing to do. Actually, that sentence is not in the letter. Hmm. Okay, hold on. I search this find in page. Using a browser on a tablet, guys. Not my favorite thing. Certainty. Tell me, where is certainty? Everything has gone from me but the certainty of your goodness. Ah, so it's been paraphrased. Can we spell goodness? I think we can. We can. Ooh, that was tricky. All right, there's another one ticked off. As the water crashed over me, I sensed a change. It was night, and above, a bright full moon hung dangerously low, as if to consume me. I panicked, I flailed, I fought against the darkness below me. The thrust of my legs propelled me closer to the surface, but something was dragging me down. I burst, gasping through the surface of what appeared to be a swimming pool, but my legs wouldn't stop kicking. Attached to them were a series of wires and adhesive pads, triggering the muscles to kick. I ripped them off, and they sank. Okay, we've got electricity now. I learned how to read circuit diagrams in physics class in high school, but that was like 15 years ago. So symbol A, um, Google. It's very easy to bring up circuit diagram. So these are inductors, the arrow thing. I don't know. These right here are capacitors, but is this a capacitor between the two... Inductors? Can we spell capacitor? I bet some of you guys probably know this one actually, and the lag is probably just keeping me from seeing your uh, contributions. It doesn't look like we can write capacitors, so it's not a capacitor. Who knows what this is? Come on, friends. What is this? 
Symbol A. Battery? Could it be a battery? Seems like a weird... Well, hold on. Because this, this is an AC voltage source. Goes through a inductor. What's between two inductors? Maybe it is a battery. Can we spell battery? Don't think so. No, we cannot. Hmm. Anyone? I'm still looking myself, but I am not an expert on this stuff. It's not capacitor, it's not battery. Electric diagram between two inductors. What am I going to get from that? I found a diagram that has that symbol on it, but it's not <laughs> labeled. <laughs> hmm. Is it just current? I got CU. No. This one is trickier than I thought it would be. I thought this would be an easy one. The vertical lines between the inductors indicate a solid core. Transformer? Try transformer. Uh, does not appear to be trans- oh no, wait, wait, wait. T-R-A-N S-F I think we might have it. Or Mer. It is a transformer. Thank you, Electronics Geniuses. Thank you so much. That would have taken me forever to find. Whew. We I really do need group effort here. Doors, but I felt my shadow fly towards me across the old walls in the dim light. I burst into a room filled with shelves upon shelves of books. An unlit fireplace and a large leather chair on which sat a bearded man with dark eyes and skin the texture of an old photo. He stood and returned to my stare. Something about his eyes made me crash forward, drowsy. My shadow soared over me to attack the strange man. Hmm. So, who's the first to coin the medical term? I'm thinking the term amputee or amputate. Uh, amputation? Hmm. Aha. Apparently, the author of Phantom of the Opera was named Leroux. I can't pronounce French things. I'm, I'm not good. And there's also a doctor named Leroux. But actually, there are many doctors named Leroux. Amputation. Let's see. Well, no. Uh, I think we want... Well, yeah. Let's try that. Let's try amputation. Amputation or amputee. No. There's no AM. So do we want the name then? Do we want Leroux? Maybe not. So there must be a, a similar 
similar term. Pierre Leroux, French philosopher and political economist, maybe not. Audio keeps cutting out for you. Oh, I don't know. Peter Lowe? Who is Peter Lowe? Amputees can experience phantom sensations. Aha! That is a good point. So who was the first to coin the term? Uh... Phantom limb. Looking it up. American neurologist Silas Weir Mitchell. Can we write Mitchell? M I? Well, we gotta start. C H E L L. We can. And we've got it. That was the clue. Phantom. It wasn't the name of the author of Phantom of the Opera. It was Phantom as in Phantom Limb. Very well done. Thank you guys. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine playing this game without streaming, without it being a group Desperate effort. Desperate fear, not valor, surged into me as light bled and faded from the entire room. My shadow threw the odd doctor to the floor in front of me. She screamed like a banshee and dove towards me. I flailed for something, anything to help me. My left hand landed in the unlit fire, only to feel the intense heat as it roared to life. I grasped a red hot coal in my fist. The pain was exhilarating, and I sobbed as my fist and the coal passed into my shadow's chest. She fell over, smoldering slowly from the hole I left. I watched orange fire consume my vision, and then I woke. Okay, both he and his brother wear a crown of poppies, yet his effects will sooner leave your body. Well, I know poppies are used for opium. They also use poppy seeds. Uh, stream crashed. Oh no, the solution was uh, Mitchell. American neurologist Silas Weir Mitchell, who coined the term phantom limb. Hypnos and his twin brother. Hypnos. Who is Hypnos? Something to do with sleep? Oh, I think you've got it. Is this something you just knew offhand? Why? Oh, well, maybe not. Does anyone see P? Oh, here we go. I just didn't see it. Hypnos is correct. Uh, Lenzo One Gaming. Who is Hypnos? And how did you get that answer so quickly? We demand to know. Google Foo. Very nice. Very impressive, Google Foo. Um, we obviously have some very skilled Google ninjas here in the group. And I need to change the size of my chat window just a little bit. There we go, so that I can see this. Okay, uh, we now need to find a connection between Virginia Woolf, Electrotherapy, Sleep, and Silas Weir Mitchell. Greek god, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, okay. Uh, Virginia Woolf committed suicide. Was she the one who put her head in an oven? And died from... Hmm. Oh, she drowned herself by filling her overcoat pockets with stones and walking into a river. Oh, they wear crowns of poppies. I would have I would have gone a totally different direction. Oh, it's awesome that you got that so fast. Okay, so Virginia Woolf, we were talking about her suicide. And how yeah, she died. Yeah, you guys have got some some uh some latency on the stream, but that's okay. Sleep and death. Aha! Well, yeah. That makes sense. That was a good clue, actually. It would have taken me a while, but it was a good clue. Okay, so Virginia Woolf drowned herself by filling her pockets with rocks. Electrotherapy... Electrotherapy... Is that, like, shock therapy? Electrotherapy. Sends mild electrical pulses to the problem area is used for treating pain. Can also refer to electroshock treatment, psychological electroshock treatment. Okay. 
George Henry Savage was a psychiatrist. Aha, uh -huh. so maybe her psychiatrist then. Uh, electrotherapy retards muscle atrophy. Sleep, physical act inactivity. Silas Weir Mitchell. Neurasthenia. I don't know what neurasthenia is. Is that the phantom limb? An ill-defined medical condition characterized by lassitude, fatigue, headache, and irritability associated chiefly with emotional disturbance. So all this has to do with psychology or psychiatry and neurology. And physiology. Sleep. Lethargy. Um, how does Virginia Woolf tie into that? Her psychiatrist. <laughs> We're just about out of time, guys, but I want to solve this puzzle before we end the stream. Go over a few minutes. Maybe we can just try uh, mixing some of these terms together in Google. George Henry Savage. So he was a prominent English psychiatrist. He worked with hypnotism. Are we looking for hypnotism? Can we spell that? I'm seeing a lot of parts of America in there. <laughs> Could be just a coincidence or a red herring. However, hypnotism does not seem to be something we can type into here. Connects to sleep and physical inactivity. Hmm. He was sparing in his use of chemical sedation. I feel like this guy might be the key somehow because all of these things are kind of related, but this guy feels like the least related. So maybe there's something specific that he did. I could be way off, but that's my instinct. Virginia Woolf saw him intermittently for a decade. He worked as a consultant for asylums. And yeah, experimental psychology and hypnotism. We can't write hypnotism in here. Hmm. These things all feel very related, but I can't think of one word that would describe. There must be some specific event or... Coma or something? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of synonyms for, like, unconsciousness. These things all have to do with... We've got H-I. How come we don't have H-Y? I want it to be hypnotism. <laughs> Anyone coming up with anything? And muscle atrophy. Can we spell out coma? No, can't. George Savage treated Virginia Woolf by extracting her teeth. Oh god. Well, that obviously worked. Good job, Henry Savage. Can't write coma, we can't write comatose. Hmm. I 
feel like maybe this is going to be a less interesting one to watch later on YouTube. If you're watching now, you can be joining in and helping us research. That's not it. Just trying to see what letters have we got to work with. We need four, four bits of, of text from out here. Sleep medicine. This all, this all is re related to sleep or to inactivity. When people watch on YouTube, they'll be screaming the answer at the screen. Yeah, I'm sure they will. This would probably be just infuriating to watch later. <laughs> Sorry, people watching later on YouTube. Next time, join in the stream and you can you can tell us the answer right away. Goodness, I cannot... I feel like it must be something so simple, too. I'm looking for synonyms of coma now. <laughs> Unconsciousness. Oh, that's way too long. We only get four parts. Insensibility. Stupor. Oblivion. Inertia. No, I don't think any of those are in here. Can't write paralysis. Nope. Huh. I'm tempted to take one of the hints. But then I feel like we're going to feel really silly. Wait, humorous. An ex a state of extreme lethargy or sleepiness. Can we use that? No. Blackout, collapse, torpor, trance. So poor. No, I'm not seeing any of those. The use of sedatives in insanity. Sedatives, maybe? Can we use, can we write sedative? That's related kind of to all of these. No. Insanity. No. We don't have the letters for that. I don't know, guys. I think maybe I'll, I'll take one of the hints. Is everyone alright with that? Any objections? I'll give you 30 seconds for the, <laughs> the latency to catch up. Need a hint. Yeah, I think we need a hint. Alright, I'm gonna take a hint. We've already used two hints. Alright. Treatment. So we're looking for treatment. We tried hypnosis. It won't let us use sedatives. Alright, so we need another kind of treatment. Treatment for coma? Stimulant, maybe? Wait, can we write stimulant? Uh, no, we cannot. Okay. Can't write sedatives. We can't write stimulants. O therapy? What's O therapy?
Oh yeah, yeah, we don't have uh, hypnotherapy. Treatments for coma, glucose, antibiotics, depending on the cause, yes, of course, but drug overdose. Is it always four bits? Uh, we know it's four bits exactly because we have these four dots here that tells us um, cure. Uh, that only gives us two. We need to use four. 80 Rockwell used electrotherapy to treat neurasthenia. I very much doubt it's going to be one of the words they've already given us. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem to have that. Treatment for lethargy. Depression. I think we have like antidepressant or something. Now it's way too long. Definitely don't have all the letters. And it's going to have to be like something related to this guy. <sighs> Why isn't it hypnosis? It would fit everything. How did they treat lethargy and depression 100 years ago? 150 years ago. How long ago was that actually? I don't remember the dates now. It was 18-something. History of depression. Prehistory. No, no, no. What about... Henry Savage... Treatment. We'll just say lethargy. Well, the depression would be. Virginia Woolf and her doctors. I can try that. What is it? Co therapy? Uh, where's therapy? No, does not appear to be it. I'm gonna grab another hint, guys. Hysteria. Treatment for hysteria. Electroshock. Pretty sure is what they used. Or, um. Uh. Oh my goodness. I can't remember words anymore. What was it when they, they cut out part of your brain? What's that called? Um. What is that called? And why am I not able to remember it? I don't know how to speak English anymore. Good website which... Lobotomy. That's what I'm thinking of. Can we type lobotomy? No, I don't think so. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> So that's where Mitchell developed rest cure treatment of nurse. I knew what you meant, but that's all right. <laughs> Neurasthenia. Rest 
Rest cure? Oh my goodness, it's a rest cure! Oh, oh my gosh. We got it. We finally got it. Thank you so much, Ferric. Ferric, Ferric, however you pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm sure it's wrong. You are a genius, and thank you so much. You found it. We have solved it. Oh my goodness. All right, well, we are over time now. So you got it. You are the best. That was awesome. Okay, I feel good. I hope you guys feel good. Um, I will stream again next Sunday at the same time. I will put up a straw poll again, if you didn't know about it this time. On Twitter and Discord, I will post a straw poll with the games that I'm considering playing. Uh, possibly I could continue this game if you guys want to keep watching this, or if you want to take a break from this, we could switch to a different game and we can come back to this later. I think this was pretty fun, if a little bit frustrating at times, but it definitely is a team effort and a good game for streaming, so thank you all so much for your help. I never would have gotten even this far on my own, even if I was just frantically Googling forever. So you guys are amazing. Thanks a lot. If you are watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to click like if you like it. I'm sorry, I have to say that. I have to say that because it helps. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I guess we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.